can't do that. You you cannot do you cannot use KCM for international travel. If y'all didn't ask that question, y'all didn't pay attention on that day. Now you know. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. Is being on the line easier than being in training? Um, I want to say yes. All right, hey Sky fam, it's your girl Ariel Rose. Grab your tea. I have all the questions here. I have some makeup. Let's get her done. So I did a flight attendant training Q and A. If you did not watch it, I'll tag it right here. This one is going to be more for actual being a flight attendant, like now that I'm actually working, Q&A. Um, if you want another flight attendant training Q&A, because that's what most of y'all's questions are about, just let me know in the uh, comments below if you want like a part two of that or a part two of this, and I'll do that. This is in no means a makeup tutorial, anything about fashion. This is literally just me getting ready. Um, I don't do makeup like that, and y'all are about to see that, so yeah i'm doing like a million things at once like i usually am so so i was recently asked how many nights am i spending in the hotel um that i'm paying for out of pocket when i'm in chicago so i switched to um pm reserve for this month so i um am able to fly in the morning of that was the main reason for me changing to pm reserve because I wanted to have that option so that I could save more money and not have to come in the night before and get that hotel. So I was just going back trying to trace through how many nights I did. So in May, I spent six nights. Um, in June, I spent three. In July, I spent two. And so far in August, which we're in now, I've spent one. So that also has to do with the fact that I've kind of learned how to work with my um, schedule that I've been scheduled prior to my trip to my reserve days more so I'm not just like going into you know the base and waiting to see like I'm really on call most of the time now honestly a trip is gonna be put on me um, a trip just got put on me I just went to go check my schedule just randomly and I see that I have a trip for next week I have a five-day bucket in the back three of my days have already have a, a three-day on it usually I am getting a trip I might go in that first day of reserve and get a call or typically a, a trip is put on my schedule literally every day of july if y'all didn't see it in the reserve schedule um every day of july i was scheduled every single day i was on reserve and it was done prior to like i knew my schedule july was great i've decreased how many days i stay in a hotel each night each month so then someone was asking how just do points work so let's go into my travel field before i was a flight attendant because um, that's kind of my thing with travel right now is that like some people are like oh you travel so much because you're a flight attendant now and I'm like nah bro I was doing this before I was a flight attendant so let's not do that but I am offered a lot of great benefits now that I am a flight attendant so I can travel even more than I was before but this is nothing new yo like I have been travel blogging for three years I've just got into vlogging this year and it's it's been something that's always been a part of my life now this is how points work with hotels I worked at a hotel at the front desk when I was in college so I could be my own hotel plug y'all I will always be my own travel plug in some shape or fashion I was my hotel plug then I'm my flight plug now I will find some way to travel affordably it's just what I do so um, when I worked in the hotel that was an IHG property which if you don't know, I feel like people usually hear about like Marriott and Hilton and they never hear about IHG, but IHG is like your Four Points, your Kiptons, your Holiday Inns, your um, Crowns, um, Intercontinentals, that's like the upper, the more luxury brands for um, IHG. Every time you stay at a property, no matter what property it is, whether it's a Hilton, it's a Marriott, it's a IHG, sign up for their loyalty program. And whenever you go to their properties, whenever you stay at their properties, make sure you put your membership number down so that you get credit and you get points for those nights. Most of the properties work how um, it depends on the dollar amount that's spent. That is how you know 
how much um, points you'll get. So like the more expensive the room, the more points that you're gonna end up getting. That's typically how that works. The thing with when we're working, some of those contracts say that we cannot get our points. So like with a lot of the um, point systems with the loyalty programs, there are points that you have to hit to hit certain statuses and there are knights that you have to hit to hit certain statuses so some of the properties will give you the night stay credit but they won't give you the points but both of them work out to your benefit so even if you can get one without the other if you can get both fantastic but if you just get one it still benefits you so i went back and looked and i've had about seven work nights which i mean i've been working for i've been out on the field for probably like four months now or out on the line and um so seven nights really isn't that much and there may have been properties that i could have put it on and i didn't but that those seven nights resulted in like 8200 points which is decent um because i just like paid for a hotel the other day out of pocket with points so it's free um but that's literally because of points i've accumulated from staying there um at the property that i stay at when i'm going in for work and then those properties that do let me get those points um when i am working so i literally just got a free hotel because of points that's why it is beneficial to join all those loyalty programs because then you're able to you know reap the benefits of that um then when you hit certain tiers you can get like late checkouts for free you can get free breakfast included um and then i get asked a lot how has commuting been um so if you watch any of my recent videos you might know that i am moving soon so i'm going to have to figure out <laughs> what commuting is like again basically because i'm going to be commuting out of a um different airport now but commuting for the last couple of months actually hasn't been bad at all um i have been able to get out either on the first or last flight of the night depending on when i needed to get in town and honestly it it's been okay it hasn't been extremely difficult most recently i've been coming in directly from trips and going back to work so um that has also shown to not be too difficult um one of my recent videos i was coming in from belize and um that was a little bit of a headache but i still made it in in time I, I mean i made it in mad late in the night but i mean i didn't have a call till the next day at like 9 a.m so it was all good um commuting doesn't have to be that difficult i think but i think it has a lot to do with where you're coming from though um there were a lot of commuters in charlotte i know when i was flying out of like laguardia one time and i mean i was just up there for an event but um i know a lot of people on my flight were commuters like i was sitting next to someone from spirit and i saw people from united a lot of commuting is also learning how to maybe go to go the scenic route and go to tiny airports that you know usually have a lot of open seats and that they always have you know like one or two you know flights out of that airport to your hub i think it is possible i know a, i know plenty of pilots and flight attendants that have commuted their entire careers i think that if you know for a fact and i think i've said this before if you know for a fact that you are commuting like from jump like you're never moving you just don't want to leave you're very settled you have a family whatever it is then it's something to look at like the routes even like when you're in training before you accept the training date i mean all of that is extremely important because it can get stressful it can get very tiring i will say this there was a point when i was just so tired i was like i just want to be off of a plane for a full 48 hours um and that was because even when you're done working you're still getting on another plane to go home you know and um that's just like an honesty moment right now but i have gotten past that and i think i have learned how to balance it a little bit better um so yeah i think i think it's definitely something to think about for sure so i've been asked do i have any credit card recommendations for travel and I thought that this was interesting. I have a 
Delta Amax American Express card and that's what I use the most for my travel. I can put my referral link in the um, description below so if y'all want to look at it and if y'all are interested in getting the card then I do recommend it. If you are not sure how to use credit cards properly, don't do it. But if you are responsible and you want to benefit from a travel credit card, then um, I think that is something beneficial. I think just Amaxes in general are fantastic travel cards. Um, so I definitely recommend them. The one thing with Amaxes is sometimes when you go to certain countries, like third world countries, sometimes they don't accept it. Like visas are like accepted everywhere, you know, like even you'll go to some countries and they won't even accept MasterCards, but um, you can, you know, you can use a visa anywhere. The benefit with Amaxes is a lot of them, depending on what tier of Amax you get, um, you know, you can get lounge benefits. Um, some might even cover um, global entry costs, um, pre-check, TSA pre-check. But the one that I use the most is my Amax. And I like using that one because also it connects to my Lyft. And um, I get points from using Lyft as well as just like spending on my card. Um, and that equals points for me with the with that airline and it it's always just been very beneficial for me um, That is the most useful travel card that I have for sure So yeah, I'll leave that in the description box below if someone asked me if you have to be in uniform to go through KCM I love y'all but you Either y'all weren't asking enough questions in training and I'll be telling y'all ask all the questions or y'all weren't paying attention because this was told to us in training. So either we just asked hella questions or y'all and y'all wasn't asking enough or y'all wasn't paying attention. Th those are the only answers. Anyways, yes, you can go through KCM, um, not in uniform, but when you're not in uniform, you have to show two uh forms of id so like your id like your license and your passport or you know like you just have to have two pieces kcm cannot be used for international travel now if you book two separate flights and you're going atl to houston and houston to costa rica you can use it atlanta to houston on that leg separately but you can and you'll already be in the airport so there's not a reason to go through security again but you can't use it if you was just showing up in houston to go to costa rica you can't do that you you cannot do you cannot use kcm for international travel if y'all didn't ask that question y'all ain't paying attention on that day now you know don't do that don't do that okay how's the work schedule so the work schedule i mean it's been okay it hasn't been terrible i don't necessarily feel like ridiculously overworked or like anything like that am i gonna do eyeliner today for the sole purpose of this video i'm gonna do eyeliner just because <laughs> anyway so sometimes people ask like you know like your friends and family are gonna be like how does your work schedule work like because no one really understands how flight attendants and pilots work like honestly and i mean it's really no fault to them because i mean why would they know if they're not in the profession but um it's not like you know where i mean if you're senior enough you can make your schedule whatever you want you can work just weekends you can work nine to five monday through friday i mean if the flights are set up like that i mean Hey, I know some people that have children, so they don't like to work on Mondays so that they can get their kids prepared for school, um, you know, at the beginning of the week. Like, there is a lot of ways you can spin and do your, um, and do your, your schedule. Um, I've been mainly doing my schedule centered around trips that I have, and that has worked out for the most part. If you haven't watched my video on how to set up your reserve schedule, then you can watch that here. And then there is also going to be my, um, then I have it for each month and I will do that going forward, my bidding process. Um, and that can be a little strenuous. 
um figuring out how to learn how to bid because i won't fault y'all for that one that is not something that you learn in training and so um learning literally learning how to bid is a whole process within itself and i feel like once you have that down like the actual process of bidding your life feels like it makes so much more sense like honestly i that's truly how i feel like once i figured out how to bid better i felt like i had more control and i mean of course that's how we all want to feel so i think that is a big step in you know just like owning your your work schedule and feeling confident in your job um random drug testing y'all love to ask me about drug testing <laughs> anyways I have never been randomed. I'm not scared of being randomed because I don't do drugs. But <laughs> but um I do have I do know plenty of classmates and other people that have been randomed. There are some people that have worked here for three years and have never been random. There are some people that have worked here for three months and have been random three times. Who knows? It does exist. People do get it. Not everyone gets it. I don't know how it's it's sorted or whatever. But yeah, random testing is real. <laughs> if you're concerned about it and um yeah how am and pm works how am and pm reserve works so the way at least at chicago o'hare international airport don't you love that pause um eyeliner is no joke it's like the ghettoest thing ever um at least the way it works there is I, at least when I was on AM reserve, I was on call starting at 4 AM. Now I've heard some people now say that it starts at 3 AM. Um, if it does, I am sorry. I wouldn't know a thing. Sorry to this man. But for me, when I was on um, AM reserve, it started at 4 AM. And so you could get a call at 4 AM for a 6 AM show. That's the earliest the show could be. Maybe with um the pickup of travel maybe some airlines have made like 5 a.m or 5 30 whatever flights so they maybe needed to push up reserve time to 3 a.m to accommodate for those flights i am not exactly sure because i am no longer on a.m reserve i can only speak on my experiences and there were times that i was called at 4 a.m on the dot to be at a 6 a.m report absolutely um from the very first day i was ever on reserve i got called at 4 a.m on the dot for a 6 a.m call so with p.m reserve which is what i am on now i am on 9 a.m to 9 p.m so a.m is 4 a.m to 4 p.m p.m reserve is 9 a.m to 9 p.m so that means during those 12 hours i think that's 12 hours so during those hours you can be called at any point to get on a trip you can be on reserve for one day and have like a four-day bucket and already have a three-day on you and you can get called on that first day and it disrupts your whole schedule and now you have a whole new schedule it can happen anything can happen when you're on reserve you are at the mercy of the airline this is not just with my airline this is with every single airline that exists when you are on reserve you are at the mercy of the airline because it is simply where you are needed that doesn't mean that once you're on a trip that you were called at 9 a.m. 4 for an 11 a.m. show. That does not mean that you will never have a report time earlier than 9 a.m. That is not what it means. Once the clock strikes 9 and they call and your phone rings, yes, you have to pick up. But that does not mean that once you're later in your trip that you're not going to have a day that starts before 9 a.m. I'm on PM reserve right now and i have reports within trips at 6 15. um so it that's not what it means i think i had some questions in my comments about that so if you're watching this video i hope that answered it for you how many uniforms do i have so when you come out of training how it worked for us was if you got a dress then you only got one other bottom and two shirts if you didn't get a dress, then you could get four tops and two bottoms. I believe that's how that worked. And of course I wanted the dress. So I thought I was gonna be like a really big dress girl. Um, 
but I actually do love the pants. So I did get the dress out of training. You like you might also want to look at the prices of the uniform pieces because like the dress is one of the more expensive pieces. And so like if you don't want to pay for it, like seeing it come out of your pocket later, then you may want to think about just getting it straight out of training. Um, I have two pairs of pants. I have two gray shirts a short sleeve and a long sleeve one white long sleeve button down and one dress and one skirt so i have a decent amount of uniform pieces i also have a gillette top which is like a top made out of like the pant like the dress material basically um but i have to get it tailored like someone so luckily for me someone i was cool with in training was like so obsessed with this lifestyle even before we were in it so she had gotten like a shipment of uniforms sent to her like when she returned back to home after training so whatever didn't fit her she just sent to me which was like love like that was so sweet of her is being on the line easier than being in training um i want to say yes i want to say yes because a lot training is so difficult because you're doing it in a short amount of time and you're learning a lot of things that you aren't going to actively use um while working hopefully because it's a lot of like emergency like it's a lot of things you need to know in case something unfortunate happens but on your average day at work, you're not going to use the majority of the things that you learned in training that revolve around, you know, evacs and emergencies and things like that. So, um, like, I'm not looking forward to my first emergency on board, you know, like, but I know one day it will happen. And when it does, I will be prepared, but it's not something that you use on a daily basis so i would say being out on the line is easier what's also nice about once you're finally out on the line is that you can make your own rhythms you can you can do your own sequence of things as long as you're staying within protocol and you know and following what each carrier wants you to do but how you set up your galley and how you you know do certain things is on you and um that's nice because that gives you again some type of control and confidence in what you're doing um so being out on the line honestly uh i do think is easier than um than training in general i would say yeah i started flying after graduation i started flying about three weeks after grad is when i had my oe and then um right after my oe you have about 48 hours and you're on the schedule <laughs> which is great if you want to get to work i wanted to take a vacation and i played myself i think i've told y'all this before but um yeah uh as soon as you pass your um your ioe you're you're working like you you are on the schedule and you are working like you are not theirs <laughs> i don't know how else like to put that the question i've gotten a few times now is do i think you can be in school while in training and while working so i had a um actually when i was on my oe the aft was in school but she had been there for like maybe 10 years at that point and she's decided to go back to school um and actually i could not tell y'all now if she does it in person or if she does it um online or a mixture of the two but but um she is able because of her seniority she is able to have the flexibility in her schedule to make it that she only flies on you know certain days and on certain trips so that she is able to either do her homework on an overnight or she's back in time for class and things like that she has the luxury of her seniority to really have a flexible schedule to be able to do class in person um if you're on reserve now i have multiple classmates that were like in their last semester of college or just in school in general and um 
they were able to get through training and do their schoolwork. It is possible. I think it probably is a lot on you. Um, but I definitely think it's doable. Like if you feel like you can do it, I definitely feel like you can do it. If you're on the fence about it, like if you're, but I, I also like I have, I have my degree, even though I don't use it. I think it's good to have your degree, especially if you're already in the process, you might as well go ahead and finish it. I mean, I'm saying this while the day before I got my job offer, I got accepted to grad school and I chose to turn down <laughs> that and go with the job offer. Um, but it was because it was a program where I wouldn't be like, I would have to, I would have to have moved states and like, I would have class basically every day with an accelerated program. So there was no way that I could do both. Um, I think there's a lot of personal decisions that go into it. But if you're like in your senior semester of college, um, you can do it. I, I really think you can do it. But I think that it's something that you have to do online. I think it would have to be online courses, which I'm sure now, especially after COVID and whatnot, is easier to do. I feel like a lot of courses that probably wouldn't be offered online prior, because I, like, I have a, a degree in science, so I feel like a lot of classes that even I took that weren't offered online probably are now because COVID, but I mean, I'm not positive. I haven't looked at a school schedule in a few years luckily so <laughs> and the last question was do i food prep so no i do not food prep the majority of my food or the majority of my money goes towards food um i feel like it's kind of difficult to food prep as a commuter even though i do know multiple commuters that do successfully food prep i think i just use that as an excuse because i don't want to do it in a way <laughs> but um I think it's possible to do it as a commuter. I just haven't necessarily tried to. Also, I don't want a ton of bags, and I think of a lunchbox as another bag. I travel with my Max Light 5 um, small duffel and then my rollerboard, which is a Travel Pro 21 inch. Um, I think that those like that is enough for me i have started to see much smaller lunch boxes which i think i do like but then i'm like how much does that help within you know the food prepping realm and i guess that maybe depends on how long your trips are like maybe you can prep for like two days on a four day trip so at least you know that you're not you know like spending money every day um i do keep tupperwares with me um, so like if I get something to eat and I have leftovers, which I usually do, I'll put it in the Tupperware so that it doesn't take up as much space in my smaller duffel and I'll freeze it um, like that night and then I'll put it in another bag and that's what I'll put it in my um, in my little duffel and then I'll like buy lunch or whenever we're done with our day it's usually thawed or I can just put it in the microwave once I'm in my hotel and whatever and that's sometimes how I can save a little um, I do try to give myself a little budget on how much I spend for lunch and how much I spend for dinner um, and how much I spend for breakfast sometimes sometimes calls are just so early that breakfast isn't even something you have to think about and most of the hotels that we stay at do offer um free breakfast some of them don't which when we do go to those hotels i'm like why because i feel like we should always be offered free breakfast but that's a personal opinion that's just me and i keep saying i'm gonna attempt it but i think it'll be way easier to attempt it i know i'm using it as an excuse but like i think it'll be way easier to attempt it when i live in the same city as my base and i don't know if that'll ever happen so there's that um but I'm gonna save the hair because this ended up being longer than I expected it to. But my face is done. This is about all I do. I, I don't wear foundation or anything like that. Uh, if I had bronzer, I would maybe put some on. I don't know. But um, yeah, this is me for today. I'll save the hair for another video. If you enjoyed this video, if it was helpful at all to you, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, Sky Fam.